The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. So why in God's green earth did God come to this green earth? Well, Jesus came to announce that He was King and that He was taking charge of the world. If you remember from some of those Christmas readings and some of those Christmas hymns we just sung from from back from the prophet Isaiah and even to the angels, they announced that a shepherd would come, a child would come, who would shepherd and lead the people of Israel, who would sit on that throne of David forever. Jesus came to announce that he was that king, and he has brought that kingdom. And he invited his followers to join him in that kingdom. He said this at the end of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. I'm the king. (laughs) Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. You see, friends, Jesus came to bring God's reign and God's rule. He came to bring his kingdom to this earth. Why? For those who are the lost and the least in this world. Those who are the low. In the Gospels of of Matthew and Luke, Jesus says words like this. Blessed are those who are poor and those who are poor in spirit. Blessed are those who hunger and those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who weep now. Blessed are those who are hated by men. And also those who are persecuted for my name's sake. Blessed are those who are meek. Blessed are those who are merciful. Blessed are those who are the peacemakers. Because great is your reward in God's kingdom. You see, friends, our our God, Jesus, came for the lost and the least. He came for the lost. He said this in Luke. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Jesus didn't come for people who thought they had it all together. Jesus didn't come for the people who thought they were righteous. Jesus didn't come for the people who thought everything was good because they came to church every week. Jesus came for the people who were broken and knew they were broken and who needed help. Jesus ate with the tax collectors and sinners, and when the religious people of the day chewed him out for hanging out with the wrong people, Jesus said this to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners. Because, friends, Jesus came to save sinners. Jesus came to save you and me. He came to save the people that we think have no place in God's family. People who made mistakes and people who broke God's laws. And no one is too far away. Just as our friend St. Paul said, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. See, friends, nobody is beyond Jesus' love. Nothing you've ever done can keep you away from Jesus' love because Jesus came to save this world, not to condemn it. Jesus said this, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And Jesus didn't only come for for, for the people who were lost. He also came for the least of this world, those who were downtrodden and outcast, the ones that, that sometimes we look down on. Jesus said this about himself. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. And to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And as we look through the Gospels, we see Jesus doing just that. Jesus healed the sick. He released the demon oppressed. He he fed the poor. He came into places of fear where people were afraid. And he brought peace. He came alongside people who were mourning, who were in anguish. And he wept with them. Wherever Jesus comes, he brings life. He said it this way. He said, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So hear the good news this Christmas. If you are the lost and the least, Jesus came for you and he came to bring you life. If you're a sinner, if you've made mistakes in your life, Jesus came for you. 
if you're weak, if you're powerless, if, if you can't get over those things that come against you in life, Jesus came for you. If you're lost and, and you don't know which way to go and you're trying to find a way in life, Jesus came for you. If you're crying, if you're mourning, if you're in pain, if you're afraid, if you have regrets, if you have shame, Jesus came for you. If you're sick, Jesus came for you. If you're an outsider, Jesus came for you. If you're broken and hurting, Jesus came for you. So Merry Christmas, because Jesus came for you, and he came to bring you abundant life. Amen. As we enter into a time of confession and absolution this morning, where we confess our sins to God and, and hear his words of forgiveness, I want to scroll back to that last verse, that, that John chapter 10 verse. It says, the thief came only to steal and kill and destroy. That thief, of course, is Satan. Friends, sometimes we have to confess that we act just like the thief. We act just like Satan. We steal and kill and destroy. And maybe that's not through us like breaking into things or murdering people. Maybe you haven't done those. Um, but oftentimes we act like the thief when we condemn or we judge people that Jesus has already forgiven. When we condemn or judge entire people groups that Jesus came to save. When we make things about us versus them, when we harbor anger or resentment, when we're filled with, with fighting and hatred, we act like that thief. And so we have to confess, and we get that opportunity once again to turn to Jesus, turn to that side of life, and hear those words of life for us. So let's stand as we confess our sins. We begin in that name that we came into Jesus' family in, that name we were baptized into, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we confess along with Scripture. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We have the opportunity now, as we've confessed before God, we're sinners. As, as we confess before God, he forgives those who are humble and those who admit they need him. Let's give to God our sins. Confess silently in your hearts those times where you've acted like the thief. Or you haven't loved God and you haven't loved others the way you should. Confess that to him now. Let's confess our sins to God our Father together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus, Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Friends in Jesus Christ, hear the good news this Christmas. Almighty God in his mercy came to this earth, gave his son to die and to rise for you, and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.